Hello everyone, I'm Tian Yi Wang from the University of Hong Kong. Today I'm presenting our paper, Deepfake Noise Investigation and Detection. Well, first of all, let me share with you a puzzle for everyone. Are these faces real or fake? Can you identify them? So the four faces are from the four image frames, where the four image frames are extracted from four videos. Well, I can tell you that some of the faces are fake, but even though you know that some of them are fake, are you able to find them out? Well, to me, they all look so real, right? Even though you know that some of them are fake, uh, it's hard to find out who they are. And for the fake faces, they are actually generated using a technique called deep fake. But I'll leave the solutions till the end of this presentation, and I'll share with I'll share with you how we determine why uh, like like some of them are fake. Okay, so speaking the which of deep fake, what is it? Deep fake refers to a facial synthesis technique that completes face swapping operation and generates hyper-realistic fake videos using deep neural networks. In this figure, uh, I show you a commonly used architecture for deep fake face swapping, the autoencoder. Specifically, there is a shared encoder and two individual decoders composed of convolutional neural network backbones. The shared encoder takes charge of learning the common facial features regardless of facial identity. While the two individual decoders, they each is trained to construct faces of a unique identity. Uh, so after the model is trained, in order to swap a source identity onto a target face, the well-trained autoencoder will take in the target face as an input and passes the encoder learned facial features to the unique decoder that is corresponding to the source facial identity. After that, the decoder will generate a face with the identity of the source person. And at the same time, it will maintain the facial expression and action of the input target face. For example, uh, we input the face A of identity A through the encoder. Well, the encoder doesn't care about what identity you are. It will learn the general facial features and project the features into a latent space, latent face A. And we know that we want to ultimately generate a face with identity B. So we will pass this latent face A through this decoder B and the reconstructed result will have the identity of B but having the facial expressions and attributes of face A. That is how deep fake face swapping work. Okay, so it's quite interesting, right? And um, actually nowadays, there are a certain amount of applications uh, that can perform deep fake face swapping for entertainment in our real life. And I believe many people have played with such kind of tools and such kind of softwares. Well, it can entertain people. But in this work, we focus more on detecting deepfake because there is a dark side of this technique. It is true that every technique has a good side and a dark side, but for deepfake, why is it so urgent that we need to be able to detect them? I want to first discuss about their potential victims so that you will understand why it is so urgent and why we want to do that. There can be a lot of uh, group of victims by deepfake, uh, most commonly for the celebrities. <clears throat> they can be easily perform the face swap onto porn videos. Let me give you some real life examples. You all know about the, the famous actress, Emma Watson, right? Who have performed Harry Potter video, uh, sorry, Harry Potter movie. Also a famous singer, Ariana Grande. These two ladies 
They are famous and they both are victims of deepfake. Their faces have been swapped onto porn videos. But now when I tell you about this story, that means we all know that those videos are fake right now. But at the time when the videos first came out, it is quite annoying because these two ladies, they need to prove that they have never done that. And uh, with such kind of things, their reputation can be affected and their career can be affected. So uh, this can be crucial to the celebrities. Meanwhile, politicians is another group of people that can be easily uh, attacked by deepfake. Uh, generally, uh, they can be face swapped into speeches that they've never given to people. Specifically, uh, for a president of a country, you can swap his face onto a fake speech talking about some bad things to the country. And that can cause some panic in the whole society of that country. So this is super crucial for people and for a country. A good example that you can find is a fake Obama. Or you can search that uh, search for that on YouTube. You can easily find it. In that video, um, ex USA President Obama is sitting in the White House in front of a table, giving a speech. In that speech, he was insulting the ex President Donald Trump. Well, we all know that he. It is unlikely that he would do that because. Uh, he was a president and he is a polite people. But by watching the video, you have no idea because there's uh, no obvious artifact that you can discover to prove the video is fake. But luckily, the one who generated the video, who made up the video, he admitted in that video that he intentionally made up that video. And the goal of him was to tell people, tell the society that people can easily swap someone else's face onto another person, which can be very harmful and can be very crucial. And besides, at the end of the day, we believe that anyone can become a victim of deepfake. Why? Well, we post photos and videos on social media all the time, right? In China, we post our photos and videos on WeChat, on Weibo. And in Western countries, I think people use IG, the Instagram, and uh, Facebook, right? So a bad thing about that is um, most of the, the posted materials are publicly available to people, even if uh, you are not a friend of the poster, right? So uh, like for, for me, if I post uh, some video of mine onto my WeChat, onto my Weibo, I make it public and someone or well, anyone can acquire it, can uh, like use the deep learning face swapping model to study about my facial features and they can perform face swapping on me. So this can be crucial and anyone can become a victim. Or someone might argue that we can use our human eyes to classify them. Well, the answer is no, you can't. Why? You remember the on the very first page, I showed you four faces. I told you that some of them are fake, but were you able to surely find them out? No, why? Because they're hyper-realistic. They have such a good quality that it is hard to find any obvious artifact. Meanwhile, another problem is that nowadays, the source code of face swapping are publicly available. And there are even some uh, deepfake softwares that can be easily used by anyone. That caused the trouble that the currently spreading deepfake materials on the internet are of a really large amount. So because of the hyper-realistic quality and the large amount, it is nearly 
impossible for people to manually classify the deepfake content. And therefore, it is uh, urgent for us to have some automatic classification and detection model to protect and to prevent high quality and unseen deepfake attacks from affecting the human lives. Oh, now let's move up to the approach proposed by us. But before we actually go through it, I want to mention one more thing. Uh, we know that there actually exist some uh, good deepfake detection models that they claim they were able to classify the fake and real faces with a uh, really high accuracy. Well, most of the such kind of work they would propose a model and they tell you uh, how good they are in terms of the accuracy or some other statistic metri uh, metrics. The, but the, the, problem is, the problem is that when you see the faces by your eyes, you find it difficult to know which ones are fake and which ones are real. And now a model tells you, I think this one is fake. How can you trust it? How, how are you able to believe that the model is correct. It's kind of annoying. It's uh, it, feels, it feels unsafe, right? So the goal of our approach, we not only perform a deep fake detection model, we also extract the underlying forensic noise traces for investigation. So we try to make the models explainable and interpretable. Okay, now, let me move up to our model. In this work, we proposed a noise-based deepfake detection model for forensic investigation. Uh, as you can see, we show you the uh, model workflow in this figure. Uh, generally, we have four parts. Uh, first of all, we have a face background extraction strategy. Then the extracted face and background pairs are passed through the Siamese architecture for deepfake noise trace extraction. Then the extracted noise traces for faces and background are compared and uh, analyzed to get a similarity matrix score. In the end, the similarity matrix is uh, refined and in the end it will be performed deepfake detection to make the final decision on the input faces to determine whether it's fake or real. <clears throat> so it looks a little bit complicated, but don't worry, we'll go through it step by step. Well, first of all, the face background extraction strategy. Um, we need to make a claim right now. Well, the deep fake, they usually only modifies the face area when performing face swapping, and most of the background area remains unchanged. This is uh, usually true. Why? Because we need to know the goal of deepfake. The goal is to swap a face onto another face. The only part you want to modify, you have to modify, is the face area. And meanwhile, once you are swapping a face, you want to make it as realistic as possible. That means uh, the fewer artifacts you left within the image, the more real it looks like. So for the unnecessary part, maybe the background parts, you don't need to modify them. You don't want to leave uh, unnecessary traces at the background parts. So uh, in this work, we extract the keyframes from the candidate video because the keyframe usually contain uh, most rich, the richest uh, information for us to study. And then from each keyframe, we crop the face square. So we perform face detection and we crop the, the square that contains the face. After that, we look for the furthest background square that has the same size as the face square within the image frame. Why? <clears throat> While we're looking for the furthest one. Well, the reason is that even though we know, we claim that background are usually unmodified, it is usually unavoidable that the background area near the face area can be accidentally affected. 
because it it's quite hard to know like specifically which part of the basis is modified. So to keep it as safe as possible, we look for the furthest background within image frame. So we guarantee that the extracted background square is for sure unmodified with no manipulation traces. As a result, for each face background pair, the cropped background square should be always unmodified while the face square may be manipulated by deepfake with the noise traces left behind. Okay, so we have the face background extraction and now we pass them through the Siamese architecture with shared weights. Within the Siamese architecture, we have the noise extraction. The goal is to extract the underlying forensic noise traces of deepfake from the face and the background. In this work, we adopted the DNCNN denoiser. Uh, it was from uh, earlier work, which in that work, the DNCNN is proposed for image denoising to make the image more clear and more clean. Uh, and generally they did Gaussian denoising. In this work, we adopted the DNC and denoiser. We improve it, modify it to perform as a noise extractor. Well, initially, um, their well-trained DNC and was only able to extract the, do the, the, the Gaussian noise. And to achieve our goal to extract the deepfake noise traces, we use plenty of data with face and background pairs to train the model for a deepfake noise trace extraction. Um, so in the end, for the real faces and the backgrounds, they should have like clean noise traces because there's no manipulation happen to them. And for the fake faces, there should be clear manipulation traces left behind. On the right side, we have the uh, architecture of the DNC model. So we're passing a face uh, through a lot of layers, we'll be able to extract the traces. Um, generally speaking, this architecture of DNC mainly contains the convolutional layers along with some of ReLU activation function and the batch, batch, batch normalization, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, we extracted the noises and we passed them through the similarity matrix to study the noise difference between the face and background. So the goal is to have a, a good similarity value for a real face and the background because they both have no noise traces for deepfake. While for the fake face and the background, there should be like uh, very different noise traces where the similarity should be low. And the similarity matrix is accomplished using inner product of the two noise representations. <clears throat> Specifically, we compute the similarity between column I of face noise and column J of background noise by this formula. Someone might ask, why you used uh, the product instead of summation. Well, for a summation, if you add up two metrics, the only interaction between the two metrics are at the same position of each element. But for product, we compute the similarity between any two columns, any pair of two columns uh, from the two noise representations. So there are more interactions between the two noises and we should find uh, more similarity information from them. After that, we got the final product of the two representations and we're ready to perform deepfake detection accordingly. So uh, the only thing right now is to reshape uh, the similarity scores because uh, within the neural network, we don't have the same, the matched up uh, dimensions. We are not able to perform the classification. So for refinement, we have the 2D convolutional layers, the fully connected layers, 
And then we have the matched up dimension. We perform the softmax operation. So the ultimate softmax scores will help us to determine whether the input phase is real or fake. Well, this sums up our uh, proposed model, the whole uh, workflow. Now we share with you some of the model performance when we evaluated our model in the experiment. In this work, the data set we used is CELEBDF, which is a data set that has high quality and high difficulty. Uh, the data set is claimed to be generated using a enhanced deepfake face swapping algorithm. Well, something special about this data set is that it contains a special testing set with 518 videos. It's an unbalanced data set. Why is it so special? Because if you evaluate the state of the art models on their normal testing set, on their normal set, usually the models will achieve some good performance. But when you transfer the model onto this 518 videos, the performance will degrade a lot. We don't know why. So we think there might be some mysterious uh, manipulation technique applied to these 518 videos. In this work, we train our model on the CLFDF normal data set, and we also tested our model on a test set of the normal data set. To further prove our model robustness and transferability, we also tested our well-trained model on the 518 videos. Uh, we show you the performance in the table on the bottom. Uh, meanwhile, we compared our model with other state-of-the-art deepfake detection models. Um, for the models with the source code available, we trained their model and tested their model with using the same data set as ours. But for the methods with dashes in their cells, that means uh, we were not able to acquire their source code. But luckily, they reported their performance on the 518 videos in their paper. So we directly adopted their performance to uh, put them in this table. As a result, you can see that on the CLFDF normal testing set, our model achieves like nearly perfect detection performance. And on the 518 videos, since it was an unbalanced data set, we only chose to use uh, the AOC score. And uh, we actually achieved nearly 90% of the AOC scores. For all testing data set, our model achieved the state-of-the-art performance. Is it sufficient? No, we don't think so. Why? We want to explain why the model makes such kind of decisions. So that is why our model is better, because we visualized noise traces extracted by our model. So now is the time to tell you the solution of the, of the puzzle at the very beginning. Uh, I remember we saw Emma Watson's face on the first page. We saw uh, this gentleman's face, this lady's face, and this lady's face. So two of them are real and two of them are fake. In this visualization, uh, on the first two rows, uh, there are the real faces and background, and along with their extracted noise traces. On the bottom two rows, uh, there are of the face, uh, the fake faces and their corresponding background. So, as expected, for the real faces and all background squares, the noise traces extracted are mostly clean. While for the fake faces, uh, they reveal complicated. Uh, noise traces, and you can even roughly see the face shape within the noise traces. So all things are as expected, and we have achieved our goal. As a conclusion, we not only achieved satisfactory detection performance for deepfake detection, but also we successfully extracted the deepfake noise traces, which we think is a, a really good result. But meanwhile, future work should be done to focus more on cross data set performance on unseen data because there are a lot more data right now. And to keep the model transferability, we need to test it on more data. And that's it for today. Thank you for listening.